And yeah, welcome back to the Career Build Series 2023. This is episode number five. And so uh, back where I left off, made a little bit of a mistake last time and lost um, some of the work I did. So I started from scratch. I'm going to quickly go in here and see if I want to start from scratch. I think I do. I think it's going to be the, the best for you guys to kind of see me start from scratch. So I'm going to copy all this information. If you saw the last one, you saw I started doing all this and then... I forgot to save when I went to go grab something, and I lost it. And so I didn't lose that much, but I lost a little bit. So let's go ahead, and I'll start this fresh microcontroller. This is going to control all my Azipod, my engine, and everything else. And so I'm just using a, a microcontroller I call Blank. Azipod Engine Controller. Okay. All right, so let's get started on this. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add um, two composite nodes. So one's going to be from the helm, their inputs. Second one is going to be from the engine. All right, next I'm going to add a number output. That's going to be air. Next I'm going to add a, a number output. That's going to be fuel. Then I'm going to add a number output clutch. All right, then I'm going to add an on-off output that's to starter. All right, then I'm going to add, or I need next, I need a number input. That's going to be RPS. I need another number input. This is going to be p-value, so I can tune my p-value of my PID. All right, good. So let's go ahead and get in there. And then so what I was talking about before I do now is I do property text. And I put it right here where these are spawning and I just type spawn. And that will show me where these are spawning because, you know, often you'll build around it. And then as they spawn, you can't find them. This way it's up here. It's easily seeable. You know, there'll be one here. And then when one drops below it, you know, you've spawned one there. So that's why I do it. All right. So let's start just uh, lining these up here. All right, and so all of these outputs are going to go there. The inputs are here. Okay, good. So um, I'm going to start with doing, I'm going to actually paste something. That's all my stoichiometry stuff. I grabbed that off of the uh, module engine tutorial. If you need that, you can go grab it. So here we're going to start with the helm. And so I'm reading a number. I'm going to be reading channel 2, which is my WS, and that is going to, it's set to reset at 100% value. What that will do is when I press the W key, it's going to go all the way to 1. When I press the S, when I let go of it, it's going to go to 0. When I press the S key, it's going to go all the way to negative 1. And so it's like turning the that into an on-off switch, essentially. And so I do that. And then I can feed it into an up-down counter, which will actually be my throttle. So the increment's going to be 0.001, all right? And my reset value is going to be 0. My minimum is going to be negative 20 for RPS. My po positive value is going to be 20 for 20. And so what this is going to allow me to do is have it automatically go into reverse. All right, so good. So that's there. All right. And so what I'm going to be reading here is... Let's see, I could probably do a function. Let me try this. Um, variables, constants, operators, trig, add-on. I think it's under add-on. ABS is absolute value of X, so that's what I want. All right, so I just was in there. Um, let's see, add-on, ABS. So ABS, X, okay. So that's going to give me the absolute value. So, that only, so if this number goes negative, it gives me a positive. The only reason we want to read negative here is because that's going to tell me to put it in reverse. It's going to tell me to put the gearbox in reverse. And so this will always read the positive number. Uh, next, I need to do clamp. I don't think I've done a clamp in here before, but we'll do it. So clamp, as you can see, uh, clamp X within Y and Z. So uh, let me see. 
trying to think the best how to do this without screwing it up. Um, so can we do this? Can we do clamp absolute value of x between 4 and 20? No errors detected. Okay, so we're going to get the absolute value of x. It's going to keep that between 4 and 20. So what this is, the whole point of this is 4 is my idle. I'm setting my idle, what I want the engines to run at, at idle. Now, we're going to do the clutch separately. And so when the clutch, when so when my number goes below 4 on my up-down counter, it's going to essentially negative out my clutch. So what's going to happen is when I'm sitting at idle and the engine is not turning, when my thrust is at zero, imagine you're holding the throttle and you're at zero. Boat's not moving. Engine is running though. Engine is running at four RPS. As I start to increase my thrust, uh, as I increase my throttle, when I hit about four, R when I start going past four RPS forward, it, I start reading a positive number, say five greater than four. What it's going to do is it's automatically going to clutch, uh, clutch the engine and it's going to start to turn the propeller, and it's going to give me positive forward motion at 5 RPS. When I start to bring the thrust back, and I get below 4, between 4 and negative 4, it's going to give me zero clutch, as if I'm stopping the boat. When I bring it back, and I go to 5 RPS in reverse, it's going to automatically clutch, it's going to automatically give me 5 RPS on my engine, and it's going to automatically kick me into reverse so that I go backwards. So I can seamlessly, with just moving the throttle up and down, I can easily go forward, reverse on my, and it will auto clutch, it will do all that for us. All right, so that's in there. Next thing I need is the wonderful PID that I love so much. Again, people fight the PID all the time, but once you learn PIDs, they're really not that hard, and they are so useful. All right, so I always use advanced PID, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to punch that in again. So it's going to read us between 4 and 20. And so we need to compare that to the RPS. So we say, hey, I want 4 RPS. It needs to know how much RPS we currently have. Next thing I want is the p-value. I'm going to tune in my p-value like that. This, All of this here is for my stoichiometry. So I'm going to grab my engine composite, and I'll plug that in here. I uh, don't want to move this whole stack for us up half a block. There we go. And so my engine composite goes into all three of these. One, two, three there. All right, good. And so the next thing I do is I, I make myself a little note, x equals throttle. So this is my throttle. So I'm going to move all this up in here. And this will be my throttle. So my throttle is going to go to, that's fuel, and that is going to be air there. And so actually I might do a little bit different and just, I want you guys to be able to see it. Normally I try to make the lines where I, they're not in my way, but I'll make them so you can see where they connect. All right, and then we do air here. So it's going to give me my air. What this allows me to do is easily supercharge. It will read the air value as I'm supercharging, at packing more air in. It will allow me to give it more fuel. All right, good. So that's hooked up. Next thing I want to do here is I want to read an on-off. And for now, I'm going to put it in the helm. Later, I'm going to put it on a panel. But like I was saying last video, is I often overcomplicate my startup procedure. And then the problem is... It takes me too long to test. So until I get done with testing, I'm going to make it so it's not overly complicated. All right, so next thing I need. Um, I need an AND for the starter. Did this last episode, but again, I broke it, so I forgot to save it. So I'm going to make sure we save it this time. All right, so when the button is on and uh, RPS is less than, and so we need RPS. So when the RPS is less than, and so I usually use three, and so three is, um, so the engine will start and sustain at two. So by doing it at three, it allows me to have that one extra RPS buffer. So when I press one to start the engines, it's going to, and my RPS is less than two, it's going to kick the starter on. So what this does, you'll see a lot of people, tons of new players, um, they say, the engine's draining my battery, and I'm moving very slow. Well, it's because the starter is actually pushing you ahead. The starter is what's moving it. Uh, you want the starter to shut off as soon as the engine starts. And so as soon as we get over 2.5 RPS, the engine's up, in, or 3, the engine's up and running, the starter will auto shut off. If we stall the engine, it will automatically restart it. So we don't have to worry about clicking the restart 
it will automatically uh, kick it back on. All right, so there it started. Let me go ahead and update this and save. Make sure I didn't delete anything on deck. I did not. Okay, and let's save this because I uh, let's actually do this. Uh, now let's just save it here. All right, good. So that is set up. Um, we have that uh, going. All right, so let's get back in there. I just want to make sure I had a save going. All right, so the next thing we need is clutch. So what I do is an auto clutch system. And so I use an up-down counter. I'll actually use a fresh one here. And I forget what the increment I usually do is. I think it's like 0.01. Um, the increments, so what you do in real life is you do what's called feathering. And, you know, if you're driving a clutched car or a truck, you know, most of my experiences in, with trucks, um, you're feathering the clutch. And so essentially what you're doing is you're giving some of the power of the engine to whatever you're driving, in this case a propeller you're going to get resistance as the propeller tries to turn against the water, right? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as you're pushing against the water, the water is pushing back against you. And so that's causing resistance on the engine. Now, with our engine, if the engine RPS gets below two, it will stall. So as you're starting to get that propeller moving, right? An object in motion wants to stay in motion. So the... When, a, when you're first starting the propeller from a dead stop, it has a lot of resistance because it's not moving. You have to fight to get that propeller moving. All right. And so what's happening is you need to give some of the engine power to the propeller, but you also need to reserve some of the engine power to be able to maintain at least two RPS or the engine will die. And so that's called feathering. You let in a little power. And so you, you give it some, you take it away. As, it, as the RPS drops too low, you want it to take some clutch back so you don't stall. If you dump the clutch, if you turn the clutch on like an on-off switch and you gave it 100%, it's going to stall. And you notice a lot of people's builds in the workshop, they do a big wheelie. You know, the front of the bow of the ship comes up out of the water and they get moving and that looks ridiculous. And that's because they're just dumping the clutch. They're just giving a 100% clutch at, at once and it does a big wheelie and it looks ridiculous. And so you want to feather that in. So you change that increment. If it's if it's going too slow, you would increase the increment. If it's going too fast, you decrease the increment. We'll play with that. We want to enable a clamp 0 to 1. You probably don't need to enable a clamp, but I do it anyway. And then the other thing is when I'm starting, when the starter is on, I want no clutch. So every time the starter goes off, that clutch should be 0. We'll hook that up. All right, so the clutch is also going to be based off RPS. So let me see. I need to hook that up too. So um, I mean, I'm trying to remember how I usually do this auto uh, clutch. Normally I'll copy it, so I'm trying to remember. So what I want to do here is um, if it's greater. All right, so what we want to do here is. So this is dictating position here. All right, so what we can do is we can do a simple um, threshold. So if it's between uh, negative 4 and 4, all right, and we're going to do a not. So if it's anywhere outside of that, when we're within negative 4 or 4 on this, essentially when we're in our low position on our throttle, when we don't want to go in reverse or we don't want to go in forwards, um, we're going to have zero clutch. When um, when it's outside of this range, we want it to start giving us clutch. And so what we can do is with a knot. And so when it's not within that range, we want to start increasing the clutch. All right. When it's not within that range, we want to increase the clutch. When it is within this range, we want to decrease the clutch. So this will also prevent us from stalling. Let me see. Actually, no, I want to decrease off of our, let me see. It's not and. Okay, so this is how I want to do it. Uh, not and. So if it's not within that range, I'll explain this a little bit better in a second. And I'm trying to make this so you can see the lines so it's not too, I don't like having, I like having my lines pretty much invisible, but it makes it hard for everybody to know what I'm doing. So that's why I tend to keep them visible when I'm building for you guys. All right, so 
if it's not within this range, that says, hey, I want to go forward or reverse. Well, in order for me to go forward or reverse, I need to push the clutch plates together and pass the energy from the engine out to the propellers. All right. And so when it's not within that this range, it's me telling it, hey, I want to go forward or backwards. All right. And so when it's when it's that and and I, I need to have an RPS component. Where is this connected here? OK. And so the RPS component, uh, what I'm going to do is do an add block. And what an add block allows me to do is I can just go like this. And now I can kind of, instead of dragging the lines, I can make them 90 degrees. So I'm going to do that. All right. So when I. All right. So I'm just thinking through this really quick. So when I'm not within that range, that's me telling it with my throttle that I want to go forward or backwards. And if the RPS, let's see, is greater than, and so if idle is five, if idle is four, I want um, five RPS. I'm a, I don't need this, let's go with this. If the RPS is greater than five RPS, I'll walk you guys through this again. I'm I'm thinking about it in my head. It's it's hard to talk about it when I'm actively trying to decipher what I'm doing here. I know this is going to be a zoo to see what I'm doing here, but um, I will explain it in a moment. I'm trying to get these lines so you can see it. Okay, so what's going to happen here is this. So when I'm sitting there and I have a zero throttle, imagine I just have a throttle, right? It goes to one, it goes to negative one. When I bring the throttle up and I... When I'm between four and negative four, that's my idle zone. That's when I'm idling. I'm just sitting there. I don't want to move. Now I want to start moving. So I start pushing my throttle forward. I push it through four, and now I go up to five. Okay, when I hit five RPS, all right, so when I'm at five on my throttle, um, so that means I'm not within the zone, and my RPS is greater than five, right? So I've increased it, and the RPS is greater than five it's going to start to add clutch until it gets to a 1, which means full application. So if I go to 20, it's still going to start adding clutch. Uh, okay. And then so uh, essentially, can I just do a nod off this? Let me try just doing a regular knot off of this. So when I do not fulfill those conditions, so actually I kind of want to do this. So when I am not asking for, when I'm not asking to move forward or back. So essentially with this right here says, hey, I want to move forward or back. So when I'm not wanting to go forward and back, I want to reduce the clutch to zero. Uh, when I'm, this will also be no. This should be based off directly off of RPS. So um, this is going to be here. So if I'm not greater than five, I want to reduce this. So it's going to reduce my clutch to zero, or it's going to start reducing my clutch only when I um, am below five RPS. So essentially, when that will give me stall protection too. I know I'm not being very clear, and it's being annoying. I'm sorry. It's just uh, <laughs> again, like I said, it's it's hard for me to talk about it and um, do it at the same time. Uh, it will be better for me to show you. I'm trying not to make this confuse. I want you to be able to see where my lines are. But that's my clutch control. All right, good. So that's in. Um, let's see what else we have here. All right, I have all my stoichiometry in there. This should be pretty well set up to go here. All right. I think we're good. So let's update this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this. Copy. Uh, might be premature to copy this. It, it is. Um, let's keep working. Yeah, let's keep working here. Um, I want to finish this one up before I copy it. Um, that's just going to make more work for me. All right, so we have our p-value. We have our RPS there. All right, because I have a composite from the, um, from the helm, I want to do another number output. And that number output is going to go to the Azipod pivot. As the pivot. 
Okay. And so what I can go in here is again, here's my spawn. Now I'm going to go in here and I need to read channel one. Channel one is the AD. And so that's sticky. That's going to go directly out. I could go directly from the helm. Uh, you know what? I'll go directly from the helm. That will save me some. I don't, there's no reason. Do I need to pro I do need to process it through this panel because I want to be able to read it out. All right, so that's why I'm doing this. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, by reading uh, two, or uh, reading one, channel one is AD. Uh, that will go to the ASI pivot because I can also do, I'm going to do a composite, a composite output. That's going to be the panel because I want a panel to read the position of my azipods so that I know where they are. All right. So that's that's why I'm doing that. All right, so I think I'm pretty set here. Let's let's update this. Let's copy it. Um, if I make any other changes, I can delete the second panel because I want to be able to uh, control the engines independently and uh, have a panel for each engine. All right, so that's good. Let's go ahead and start hooking these up. I'd really like to get moving here and testing it. So let's go seat data. Seat data is going to go to helm, helm. Uh, I'll just grab one of these engine composite nodes. This is my starboard. That's going to be this one. This is my port. That's this one. Then I have panel. I don't have a panel yet, so I don't need to hook that up. Uh, this is going to be my port. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to we'll do some smart here and we'll cut this. And we'll move this over to the port side. That will just make life so much easier. All right. And so this is going to go um, as a pivot right there. This is going to go fuel. Fuel is there. Uh, we have clutch, air, p-value. P-value, I'm going to do a keypad. Engine RPS can go to any of these. Crankshaft pieces, starter goes to the starter. Same stuff over here. P-value, we'll grab in a second. Air, fuel. That, that's fuel, yep. That is clutch. And that is going to be as you pivot right there. Okay, good. So that's set up. Let's go ahead and let's connect these engines. So the nice thing about having a space back here is not only can I hide stuff in the transom, but I can also weight it if I need to do weight and balance issues. If I have to take care of weight and balance issues. So next thing is gearboxes here. So, so I want, so for the, um, for water, you want to increase the RPS. So you want to point this towards the engine. So those are both pointing towards the engine. This one, uh, I doubt we get a 9 to 1. Let's try a 9 to 1. I seriously doubt it. And then this one is going to be negative 1, negative 1. Usually I can get like 3 to 1 out of these, but we'll we'll test it. Let's just make this one a... One to one, negative one, one to, like that. Let's do that because I want the same amount of thrust forward and backwards. That's definitely that's important with an azipod to be able to have the same thrust forward and backwards. And then three to one, three to one. That's fine. And unlike a lot of people, I do I do them realistically. I don't shift gears in a boat. You know, you don't need to. It's it it has built-in slip essentially. You don't need to shift gears. All right, so that's going to go where are we at. We're offset one, I think. Nope, I'm offset one. Okay, good. So this cuts here. Yeah, this is going to be kind of a circuitous path here to get through, but it's not a big deal. Can these all be deleted? Okay, no, just that one. Okay, because this has that little skeg going there. All right. All right, and this is going to go around like that. And so this is just going to hook up to the gearboxes. So this is going to pass the power from our engines to the azipods. All right, good. So that's all set up. That's uh, plumbed in. All right, good. Uh, so I think we're pretty good. So we need to hook the reverser on there. So what, did I lose my reverser? I did. So I haven't hooked up my reverse yet. So let's do that. All right. So we need to hook up our reverser. And so if I move these, it breaks the connection. So I need to not stop doing that. Um, 
there's going to be an output. This is reverse. All right. And so what's going to happen here is pretty simple. If this number here is negative, um, I want to go in reverse. Actually, let's do negative 5. Okay, so if it's less than negative uh, 5. All right, so this is before the absolute, so we're going to be able to read a negative. That's why I'm doing it this way, is I need to be able to read the negative off of this to get that to go into reverse. All right, and so if this is less than negative 5, that's going to kick the reverse on. All right. Probably make it negative 4. Let's make it negative 4 because I want it to switch it to reverse before the clutch engages. So it needs to be a different number than the clutch. All right, so that's set up there. All right, let's update this one. That was port. We need to fix starboard here. All right, and so that's... Uh, let's add this node on here, move that so they're identical, output reverse. All right, and so we need to grab that. And so this is going to click our engines into reverse here. All right, so that's good. And then I need to connect some nodes here. So I broke one node. I broke the RPS connection when I moved it. Reverse goes to the back one there. That's the only one that reverses. Then I broke the RPS node here. That's P value, so I need a key. Or not a key, yeah, keypad. All right, and so I'm gonna test out my, I'm gonna uh, set my P values here. And so they could be the same for, they're going to be the same for each engine. So that's gonna plug in there. And then did I hook the P values up? I don't know, let me check. P values connected, so that should be good. Okay, so hopefully we can get a start going here um, and everything running. All right, and we'll worry about ballasting later, uh, moving the weight around. All right, so this is going to be we're going to start with a 0.12. I know that value tends to work. Press one. All right, so um, we have one running away. And so let's figure out what we're missing. We must be missing a connection. So a runaway tends to be the, um, it's not reading the RPS correctly. It's RPS. So this one right here, I didn't hook the RPS up on this one. So that one was the runaway. So essentially the PID is telling it, hey, go full throttle, man. We have zero thrust, which we didn't have zero thrust because it wasn't reading it. So, all right, 0.12. I just know that from experience that works. All right, we have two running as a pod. Let's start moving forwards. I'm pushing them forward. I really should put some gauges on there. All right, so I'm gonna read. I'm gonna put some gauges in here. Uh, gauge dials are one of the best ways to know what you're doing here. All right, so what I need. Okay, so one of them screwed up already. Um, all right, which one are we in? We're in port. Okay, so port is gonna be controlled by two and um, one for the as you as you pivot. Um, the other one, starboard, needs to be controlled by, uh, what's that going to be? That's going to be three. Nope, it isn't going to be three. It's going to be four. Four is up, down. And this one is going to be three. Three is going to be uh, left, right. All right, so that should do that. Next, I need to be able to read increment point zeros are one, 20. Uh, let's do that. It's point zero one. Let's 
the increment's probably too small. Slow is probably too small on this. Probably just taking me forever to get them up and running. All right, so there's a couple of things fixed. Let's kick it on. Again, like I said, you know, one of the things I often do is I'll make it so that I have to do a complex startup procedure, like go down the engine room, flip some breakers, and until I'm tested, it makes it much easier to have a single button start. All right, so without dials, I can't tell what's going on with my engines. So I'm pushing uh, W and I'm pressing up. Here we go. It's just super slow. Okay. So that increment's still too slow. All right, so I'm going to tune the p-value with my... with a dial. Okay, let's see what's up here. Um, I have an idea what's up here. Okay, um, I should put a nice throttle there. I'm going to put a clamp on my throttle here. You, often this causes a problem. One. I also need to, oh, that's the wrong one. Clamp. I keep hitting threshold instead of clamp. It's right next to it. All right, so I want a 0.05 to 1. At, it's going to make sure that my value doesn't go too low. Also make me clean up a little bit there. All right. I should have done something while I was in there. I'll get back in there and we'll fix it. So this here is this value. Again, it's taking me too long to get moving here. So make it a point 0.1. So that's 10 times faster than it was. It's 100 times faster than it initially was. So it was and then this will plug in here. And that just sets it so that I can't uh, stall the engines out like I was doing. All right, so I'm going to update that. Then I want some dials here. And I want RPS off both um, off both engines here. Let's get rid of that. Um, And so I just want to read the RPS off starboard and read the RPS off port. Those are, that's the most important info to me. Um, this is how I'm going to tune my p-value to. If it's darting around, I need to change my p-value. So we're going to start with 0.12. Okay. So you see those going up. All right, so I am asking for an idle of 4. All right, and you can see it's giving me... 3.5. Let's go up to 0.18. Okay, that goes a little bit higher. That gets more where I want it. Okay, let's start going forward. Sorry, I'm in the build. Alright, so what I think's killing my engine here is um I can't go to full clutch because the 3 to 1 is too much, which I figured it would be. I think probably 6.5 or, a, you know, something is going to be work. So I'm going to go to a 1 to 1 for now. I will upgear this later. Um, I kind of jumped the gun on that and um, don't want to be jumping the gun on that. Okay. Let's go to 0.18. Oh, let's do 0.2. I think should be fine. Start them up. The increment is too slow in the clutch, I think. So I'm pushing them up. Got W and up. There we go. So you saw it gave me a ton of um, RPS until the clutch came full. I have a couple things I need to fix here. So let's see. Again, all the a lot of these kinks I've worked out on previous builds, and I'm just having to work them out on this one again. So point one. Let me update this really quick. Let me save it. 
Let's go um, take some numbers off. I have to move bases again. That's one of the frustrating things again. I'm going to start building this over here for now. Um, so I can just keep going back and checking. I need to check some numbers, essentially. It would be nice if it let you open it in that base, but not spawn it. You know, that way at least I could check my microcontrollers. Again, this is one of the reasons why it's good to do your... Um, have a custom game while you're doing a, a uh, career game so that you can easily test things. Easily move bases, bring in things that are very expensive, all that. So I'm going to go into my... Where's my engine controller here? Should probably just look at the node. Alright, so here's the RPS right there. So it's got to be one of these here. Alright, engine and Azipod controller. Okay. See this? I could have taken this right from there, but as you can see, that's pretty dense. Um, a lot of it's readouts, like those are readouts, but I'm checking numbers here mainly, so... I have it. I don't even have these supercharged. I should supercharge a sucker at some point. All right. So what I'm looking for is clutch. I want to get. A, I want to get kind of started with a clutch value. I want to see what I'm looking at um, as far as the clutch value, and I need to check out kind of the engine value, maybe p values. It's cooling pumps. There it is. That's generator clutch. I don't need generator clutch. That's for making electricity. Pivot. All right, let me see if I can find this in a little bit better way here. See, this is a mess, but again, I built it for myself, so I don't really care if it's a mess. Your starter right there. Is reverse gear. So I have it as if it's less than zero, it goes in reverse gear. All right, here's starboard clutch right here. So the clutch increment is 0 0.005. I have it if it's greater than 3.5, so that's probably a wise thing to do. So if it's greater than 3.5, I have them matched. All right, and so I have it as a 0 0.005. So let's try that. Let's see what the gearing is on this. So I have it set to, so I have a big gearbox here, uh, two to one. Why do I have it doubled up like that? That's weird, what am I doing? That's interesting. Oh, I know why, okay. Two to one and then, okay, that's, so I have it as a two to one. All right. I know why. All right, so what did I say, point zero zero five. And the clutch. The clutch might just be going too slow. Too fast, rather. And I'll, I'll, I'll change some other things here. So for right here, if it's... So let's do this. Let's redo the clutch altogether. I can make this better. So the starter, if the starter is enabled, it will kill the clutch. Um, I don't think I need that because I can do it off number, so that's fine. I can do that off the number, so I don't need that. So what we'll do here is if the absolute value is greater than 3.5, All right, so if RPS is greater than, I put 3.5, because I'm, I'm kind of jamming it in there. I don't need that. 3.5. So if the RPS is greater than 3.5, that means I'm making enough torque to start to give it some clutch. And... See. 
So if RPS is greater than 3.5, okay, and the absolute value is greater than 3.5, So one's going from absolute value. So it's, if I'm asking for to go forward or backwards and the RPS is great enough, increase. If it's not, decrease the clutch and grab the nut block. There we go. Decrease that. All right, so let's see if that will do it. So reset 0, 0, 0.005, 0 to 1. All right, let's grab all that. All right, update that, and then we'll go to starboard here. And all that can be deleted. All right, what's, what are you? Your clutch, so you need to be there. All right, and then the two values I need to grab are going to be, it doesn't really matter, the order, absolute, or an RPS. So if I'm ordering it to move, and if it's actually giving me enough um, torque to move, it will go. Make sure everything's still connected. It is. All right, let's try now. And so a lot of those weight blocks are going to have to come off at some point. So let's do 0 0.2. All right, so let's start going forward. Why, why it kicks it like that, I have to check. Could be a p-value too high now. See what's up with this why it's doing this now. Alright, that's annoying noise. Let's go down and I know that's annoying noise, but um, let's go down the engine room and see what's up with this. I could be having an issue with air or something. So grab that. So AFR is fine. Efficiency is good. Manifold exhaust is zero. Let's get rid of the um, let's get rid of the cats. The cats could be causing me problems already. All the banks are connected, right? Yeah, they should be. Exhaust is connected. Exhaust, you connected their exhaust. You are. You pumped through. Could very much be these cats. I'm gonna remember I was talking about maybe just faking exhaust at some point because of the nuisances of it, but. Oh, come on, man. Symmetry's not on. So we'll we'll uh, check this. If this fixes it, uh, we know it's an exhaust. Come on, man. You know it's an exhaust problem. Oh, you know what? I, it it can't get exhaust because I have these rocket pipes through there. Okay, I forgot I did that. I was I changed my mind and then I didn't never fix them again. All right, so let's go ahead and let's delete these off. Yeah, so the literally I had no exhaust, so that was it. All right, so we did fix a couple things anyway. We're going and getting some better info off that. Um, but it was the exhaust. I was uh, killing the exhaust, so you fix that. Point two. It's, often it's the simple things, and we all make those mistakes. You see people all the time on uh, Reddit and whatnot asking for help, and their engine's not running, and it's often something silly like that. You just forget to do exhaust or something. Right, we all do it. So. There we go. All right, so what I'm all right, so we're moving as you can see, and we're moving very fast too. So as you can see, uh, it's making that terrible noise because we're hitting the rev limiter. 
right, and so what I want to do is I want to start increasing the gear ratio. So let's try a three to one uh, now. Let's see, let's go to a two to one. And I'm going to do a linear speed. I'm going to see what my linear speed is going to read. I tend to do about 20% greater than what the real vehicle goes. That tends to be kind of my policy. So let's see what we can get up to here. Probably should stop plunking this into the ocean. Uh, let's see, point, point two. Let's go ahead and start it. Now, because I increased the gear ratio, it's putting more load on the engines, which is going to limit the amount of RPS we can have. So these are pretty big, powerful engines. I definitely don't want to go on the speed. All right, so that's 15 there, and as you can see, we're going like a bat out of hell right now. Yeah, 20, <laughs> we're going 50 miles. <laughs> yeah, it's a tugboat. It's not supposed to be going that, that fast. Let's take a picture of this. This is good. All right, so I'm looking for speeds. So here's speed is 10 knots. So I tend to do 20% more than that. Um, 12 knots is what the Dayman 2111. If I can get 18 to 20 off this, I'll be kind of happy. So I think that's what I'm aiming for, 18 to 20. So right now we're going 50. So as you can see, we have some, there we go, hey. The other thing too is, uh, you know, come on, man. What? Oh, I know why, I have to escape, all right. Um, I definitely don't want my engine running up that high either, so I'm gonna I'm gonna down gear this, and I want to do some pull tests and everything else. So right now, let's go like this. Grab some new gearboxes. Let's make these go the other way. It doesn't. This one's irrelevant. That's just reverse gear. This one. Let's try a three to one. So what that will do, um, no, that's gonna, that's not gonna do what I want. Um, hmm. Let's do this. Let's come up here. Let's go back, all the way back there. Okay, good. Do that. It's gonna increase the propeller speed, and then I'm gonna put a reverser here, I think. So essentially, the the greater I make that number. I should be able to get enough back pressure so that it um, slows us down. All right, so let's go to a three to one, three to one. Let's start with that. And then, um, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm loading up the engine. I'm, by making the propeller move faster, I'm causing greater resistance, which should naturally slow down my engine and give me power, so. <laughs> So you hear the engine's not screaming as much? That's because I'm loading it up. It has more resistance because I've increased the gear ratio. So if I need to load it up some more, I'm going to uh, increase the gear ratio further. If not, we should be good. We're looking pretty good here at a three to one gear ratio. I'd like to not have to add ex excess gearboxes. All right, so we are topped out. So now, um, so presently right now, what I'm asking is for 20 RPS. So what will be good here is, so right now we're only operating at less than six RPS. So I'll change the value so it only goes to six. Let's see what our speed is. Speed is 11, so that's 22 miles an hour. This is about perfect, man. This is a good speed. I can still do rescues and stuff with this. It's fast enough that I'm in good shape here. Those uh, should be turned sideways just for my own mind, but 
Could recess those in the hull too, but they tend to stick out IRL, so. Uh, the other thing too is the the lower the RPS, the um, the lower the RPS is on this, the easier it's going to be to cool, the less fuel I'm burning. So those are all things that I want. So this is running about perfectly. This is a good quiet. It's quiet too. It's not screaming in my ear. We have a good efficiency here. Temperature is coming up, but it's not. It's not screaming up. Um, let me get a node here where I can read it. So air is what are we, 0.3 liters per second. All right, so we're doing well on that. What's that? That's doing all right. I could also load the uh, load up the turbo with a little bit of gearing to help to slow down the engine. So by increasing that. You know, by increasing the gear ratio, essentially, if you remember when I was talking about uh, resistance, right? So the water for every, you know, force is an equal and opposite force. And so as the water's pushing, as the propeller's pushing against the water, the water's pushing back. Well, the higher the gear ratio, the higher the water's pushing back too. I can essentially, I'm, I'm asking the propeller to do more work. And so it's, it's the engines are trying, it's like, it's like, you know, if I asked you to pick up a one pound weight or a half a kilogram weight up off the table, right? And I said, do it as fast as you can, right? You're going to be able to lift your arm and move your arm really fast. Pick it up, drop it, pick it up, drop it, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up drop it. If I then said, take this hundred kilogram weight and pick it up and put it down, pick it up and put it down, you're going to slow down because you're loaded up. You know, you're able to do more work, right? You're able to now lift a hundred times every lift. So, you know, you'd have to move your arm really fast to equal how much work you're doing lifting that 100 kilogram weight, you know, so uh, uh, if I'm explaining that well, but uh, so essentially loading it up is what I'm doing. So I'm asking it to do more work. I'm asking it to lift greater load, more weight, and uh, it is responding by it has to go slower, but it's able to do more work. And that's the point. And because it's going slower, it's burning less fuel because it's going slower. It is. Um, you know, it's going to create less heat. These are all things that I want. All right, so the other thing, too, is this is starting to get fat and heavy in the front, but not by too much. Let's try this. Uh, can I get more power out of this by putting a gearbox here? I don't know. I will try it. We'll see. This could really kill my performance, too, uh, but we'll see. Um, I usually don't bother gearing up my superchargers. I just don't do it. Um, I don't need it. You know, if I felt I needed it, I would do it. I need to really tune in the p-value at one point to at some point too. So this is just a quick test. See if I can get more performance out of those superchargers. Looks like I did. Definitely looks like I'm getting more performance out of it now. Yeah, see I'm up to eight. Yeah, so I'm going 40. I don't want to be going 40. But what I'll do is I'll keep gearing up the propellers. So I'm, I'm forcing more air in, which will allow me to burn more fuel. Um, I want to now... I'm trying to think how I want to set these props up, though. So I could I could keep loading this up. I'm trying to think. Uh, might slow the propellers down. I don't know. I'm trying to think how I want to do this. I could flip this around and slow these down. Let's try that. Worst case, it doesn't do what I want it to do. So we're currently, we're going, what was that? 8 RPS. I didn't check the meter for a second. I should have done that. Let's, I'm just going to test it instead of making a big deal of it. Um, 
Let's go ahead and delete these two out. Let's put in new gearboxes facing the opposite direction. So now I'm down gearing. So one of the reasons I've been kind of wanting to do this is I want to be, be able to go. Let's actually do this. Let's uh, undo that. Let's spawn it. Let's test a couple things. And so if I can down gear it, that means I can pull more weight. And so this is a tugboat after all. And so what I care about most is pulling weight. So let's try it. Generally, you don't want to uh, down gear a propeller, um, but we'll see what I can do. I want to do some testing here. All right, so we're set up here. Engines are both producing about 8.3. Uh, we're doing 18, so I need to start writing some of these numbers down so that I can start doing my gearing calculations and how I want to change its dynamic, how I want to change how it performs. So we're at about 8.45, 8.45 RPS, and that's giving us 19 meters per second. All right, and so let's do a little math here favorite thing of everybody probably is math. All right, so I can tell some things about these propellers if I do this math. So let's go ahead and hopefully I do it right. All right, so let's bring up a calculator. Let's, uh, let's actually bring up, you know, I'll, do, I'll bring up a spreadsheet. And we'll do a spreadsheet. I'll do a new one. So I have a spreadsheet here. And uh, we're going to start working on this. So what I want to do here is... So currently my engine is running at 8.45 RPS, okay? So let's actually put some title in here. So uh, engine RPS, all right, this is gonna be uh, gear ratio, gear ratio. This is gonna be prop RPS, all right. So let's uh, figure some of this out. So let's go, uh, all right, so we have those set in there. All right, so the engine RPS, we'll start with, it was 8.45. Gear ratio, I'm running a 3 to 1, so that's uh, 3. And so prop RPS is just going to be equals this. Uh, so equals this times this, enter that. So our prop RPS is 25.35. I was reporting a speed of 19 meters per second. All right, speed reported was 19 meters per second. 19 meters per second, okay. Let me try to figure out the, so if we're going 25 um, RPS on the propeller and we're getting 19 meters per second. So let's go ahead and let's just do here, we'll do equal this number divided by this number equals the value. Oh, I put in meters per second, that's why it doesn't like it. Okay, 19. All right, so that is, no, it should be the other way around. Should be equals speed reported divided by RPS. Oh my God! If I could click, stop clicking on things, I'm not supposed to. Equals speed reported divided by this. Enter. All right. Oh, no, thank you. No, just go away. Um, so that's 0.74. So if I can increase this number, I'm trying to figure the dynam diameter. All right, this is this is essentially telling me for every rotation. So what this is telling me is this is telling me kind of the propeller's pitch. Um, so think of thread pitch on a screw. So propellers were called screws for a reason. I've talked about this before in my gearing tutorial. Uh, let me get a picture of a screw uh, screw jiff. 
I'll show you that. All right, so as you turn a screw, for every one rotation of the screw, you go a certain distance forward. Same thing with the propeller. And that's based on the thread pitch of the screw or the uh, prop pitch of the prop. And so what I'm essentially doing is figuring that out. And so for every, let's go back to here. So for every one rotation of uh, the propeller, I'm going 0.74 meters most likely. Yeah, 0.749, so 0.75 meters forward. All right. And so that's uh, how that's set up. And so that's kind of telling me, um, you know, if I wanted to figure out a speed, if I want to know how fast do I need to speed my propeller to go faster. Um, so, for example, let's say I wanted to go, well, I don't know. Uh, let's say I want to go 30 RPS, so it'll be 30. I'll just do really quick 30 times this. Oh, come on, man. Equals this times this. So I would need a propeller. Nope. All right. I uh, confuse myself now. But essentially, this is giving me some information. It's telling me um, for every one rotation forward, I'm going 0.74 meters uh, forward. And so I can change my RPS to get me that. So what do I want? Well, I want a speed of, what did I say? I wanted 22. 20 at the most, probably. 20, 22, something like that. So I'm just going to quickly do um, meters per second to knots. I want about 20 knots. So I need 10 meters per second. So I need about half of this. So... Let's see. All right, so let's try something. So I need about half of that to make this work. I know it's probably confusing everybody. It's confusing me a little bit, but I'm, I'm starting to get where I need to be here on this. So let's try a two to one on there. Let's see where we're at. I'd like to put it reverse and, and uh, get more punch out of this, but we'll see. Uh, I know it's confusing. I'm just trying to work out the numbers here without actually getting into some formulas of trying to figure out diameters and stuff. Why is it taking so long this time? So I'm, I'm, de I'm taking load off the engine, so I'm actually probably going faster now. Yeah, definitely. I'm going fast now. Okay, good. So uh, that's all right. Let's do this. Let's do this. So we need to upload our engines. So that's fine. I, I've kind of figuring out what I need to do here. So I'm going to grab the uh, reverser engine, the, the reverser gearboxes. And the reason I'm doing this is they're already connected to um, the logic to make them work. So I'm going to cut these. And then I'll just stick them right here, up one. All right, so all these are doing again is reversing my engines. So those get merged there, good. And so we want to continue to spin the propeller faster like that. So currently these were set to three to one. Let's try a nine to one. I This is probably gonna chug, but that's all right. Um, I can dial them back. All right, so right now that's a nine to one gear ratio. So that is, that's going to slow our engine down. Um, the engine's not going to be able to perform as fast because it has so much load on it. As we increase that gear ratio, we increase the load. And so that's going to slow me down, but it's also going to give me a lot more efficiency. And that's what I'm looking for. Slower speed, greater fuel efficiency, lower heat production. So the engine's are stalling because it's too much. That's fine. All right, so the engine's are stalling because it's too much. So I'm just going to dial these back. So that is now a 6 to 1 gear ratio. So we went from a 3 to 1 to a 6 to 1. So we're, we're at double what we were at before. So this is increasing the efficiency. We're trying to turn the propeller faster um, with a lower engine speed.
So the reason it did that little stall there was because the um, clutch came in too fast. So let's see what my speed is here. So we're currently at a six to one. So we went from a three to one to a nine to one to a six to one. We're starting to dial it in. That's seven. So it's about it's about two to get from uh, meters per second to knots. All right, let's see. Uh, so what are we currently doing here? Seven, uh, seven, seven. So we're actually pretty close here. So we're at seven knots, that's, um, nope, we're at seven meters per second, rather. That's 13 knots, so. And you see how low our, um, see how low our RPS is on our engine. So we're sipping fuel, we're not making a lot of heat. This is what we want. So try to get these as low as I can get them. All right, so that's, that's too onerous. That's going to be too much. So let's go down two more. All right, so the way you do um, gear ratios is there you're um, multiplying fractions. So it would be a 3 to 1 times a 3 to 2. So it would be 3 times 3 is 9. 1 times 2 is 2. So that's 9 divided by 2. So that's 4.5 to 1 gear ratio. All right, so I'm decreasing the gear ratio. I'm reducing the load on my engine. That's going to increase my RPS. It's going to also increase my speed because the, the propeller is turning based on RPS. So now I'm trying to go faster. I, I was at first initially I was trying to slow it down. I slowed it way down. Now I'm starting to go faster to where I want to be. And so I need to tune in that. Um, I need to tune in the clutch. The clutch is needs a little bit of tuning, not too much, but a little bit. And so, like I said, I want about 20 knots. I don't want this to be ultra slow. I want to be able to do some rescues with this to start with. I'm making sure I'm at full throttle. I am. Okay, what's my speed? 7.6. Oh, I didn't gain much. 7.6. So 14 knots. Let me, ch let me uh, increase it some more. All right, so let's go three two three two. This is a six five six five. So you can hear the RPS is coming up more because um, I've reduced the load on the engines. So this is a three times six is 18. One times five is five, so 18 divided by five. Just grab a calculator really quick. 18 divided by five is 3.6. So this is a 3.6 to one gear ratio. So we kind of change the gear ratio we get there. Let's go and you see we're up to 4.75 RPS. Let's see what's my linear speed reading. That's 11. I think we're there, guys. That's 11 meters per second, 21 knots. Alright, so we're where I want to be. So nice. Nice. So this is now traveling 21 knots. That's where I want to be. Uh, we still should be able to pull quite a bit. So next episode, we're starting to get, uh, so as you can notice, we're moving. We need to hook up batteries, generators, all these things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Uh, next episode, we'll continue working on this. Um, you know, we should be getting close to the point where I can now take this out and use this in the career gameplay and actually go do some rescues, do some towing missions. I'm um, doing some industrial stuff, moving fuel and barges and stuff like that. So hope you guys are enjoying it, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.